Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Prime Minister Modi has today silenced those who've been raising a war cry that democracy doesn't exist in India. The Prime Minister made it clear that democracy not only is in India's DNA, but the nation has proved that democracy can deliver. In a heartbreaking response to a question at the press conference, Prime Minister Modi said that there's no discrimination in a democratic India. Listen in. democracy <laughs> hai. और जैसा राष्ट्रपति बाइडेन ने कहा भारत और अमेरिका दोनों के डीएनए में लोकतंत्र है लोकतंत्र हमारा स्पिरिट है लोकतंत्र हमारे रगों में है लोकतंत्र को हम जीते हैं और हमारे पूर्वजों ने उसको शब्दों में ढाला है संविधान के रूप में और हमारी सरकार लोकतंत्र के मूलभूत मूल्यों को आधार लेकर के बने हुए संविधान के आधार पर चलती है और हमारा संविधान और हमारी सरकार और हमने सिद्ध किया है डेमोक्रेसी कैन डिलीवर और जब मैं डिलीवर कहता हूं तब कास्ट क्रीड रिलीजन जेंडर किसी भी भेदभाव को वहां जगह नहीं होती है और जब हम लोकतंत्र की बात करते हैं तब अगर ह्यूमन वैल्यूज नहीं है ह्यूमैनिटी नहीं है ह्यूमन राइट्स नहीं है फिर तो वो डेमोक्रेसी है ही नहीं और इसलिए जब आप डेमोक्रेसी कहते हैं जब डेमोक्रेसी को स्वीकार करते हैं और जब हम डेमोक्रेसी को लेकर के जीते हैं तब डिस्क्रिमिनेशन का कोई सवाल ही नहीं उठता है और इसलिए भारत सबका साथ सबका विकास सबका विश्वास सबका प्रयास उन मूलभूत सिद्धांतों को लेकर के और इसलिए हम चलते हैं भारत में सरकार के जो बेनिफिट्स हैं वो एक्सेस टू ऑल है जो भी उसके हकदार हैं उन सबको मिलते हैं इसलिए भारत के लोकतांत्रिक मूल्यों में कोई भेदभाव नहीं है न धर्म के आधार पर न जाति के आधार पर न उम्र के आधार पर न भूभाग के आधार पर आतंकवाद और कट्टरवाद के खिलाफ लड़ाई में भारत और अमेरिका कंधे से कंधा मिलाकर चल रहे हैं हम सहमत हैं कि क्रॉस बॉर्डर टेररिज्म को समाप्त करने के लिए All right, let's take this across to our guest joining us with us is Michael Kugelman, director of the South Asia Institute of Wilson Center. With us also is Joshua Schifrinson, the non-resident senior fellow of uh, Cato Institute. Chirayu Thakkar is foreign affairs expert joining us on the broadcast. Antoine Leveskis is research fellow for South Asia at the International Institute of for strategic studies joining us on the broadcast. Let me take this across first and foremost to Michael Kugelman. Are you surprised at all, Michael Kugelman, that uh, this question came up during the press conference and the Prime Minister also giving a very strong reply to that question? We've seen, of course, a lot taking place, you know, senators, congressmen writing and several claiming that they even boycott that particular joint address. But uh, that question nevertheless coming up. And very interestingly, it's even President Joe Biden who referred to democratic traditions of a free speech uh, as well as uh, equality before law and religious tolerance that exist in both countries. So very interesting that that question came up and the response of the Prime Minister. Michael Kugelman. Well, I'm, I'm not at all surprised that the question came up. I mean, this is a rare opportunity uh, for journalists to direct a question to Prime Minister Modi that, that many journalists here in the U.S. at least have, have long wanted to ask. Um, and indeed, he did offer a very uh, forceful, substantive response, which I think will certainly energize his supporters, but quite frankly, I think will cause his critics to double down on their criticism because they'll believe that what he said was simply not was simply not uh, accurate. But what I what I was struck by in hearing both of the leaders in their response to this to this question is that uh, there's been a lot of debate about whether values, issues of democracy, should define the U.S.-India relationship. And I think both of both leaders delivered a very emphatic answer that yes, the U.S. India relationship is very much about democracy and con should continue to be about that, uh, even if it's other factors like geopolitics, such as 
China, China, for example, that, that drive the partnership more broadly. But I came away from this brief press conference thinking that, indeed, uh, Biden and Modi certainly want this relationship to continue to be defined by, by issues of democracy and related values, uh, related matters. All right, let me take that question across to Chiara Chirayu Thakkar. Of course, uh, as Michael Kugelman says, those who are detractors perhaps will continue uh, to, in fact, uh, draw their own interpretations of what has uh, been answered by the Prime Minister. But uh, at this kind of level, when we're, there's so much talk about democracy, commonalities, in fact, the Prime Minister talking about how democracy is in our DNA, it's a fact that there's absolutely no discrimination and that cannot take place. Human rights and humanity cannot find place without a democratic structure in the first place. Chirayu Thakkar. Uh, I, I think uh, this issue will continue uh, in conversation between India and the United States forever. Uh, and I think this will be more emphasized whenever there is a democratic administration in place because uh, there is a huge support of progressive Democrats and they will continue to raise this issue. But I think uh, this has become, if you, if you ask me as a distant observer, this has become almost ritualistic. Uh, and uh, 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 as Michael said, uh, it may not convince everyone, uh, but it has almost become a, like a regular affair. They talk about it for a bit and the cooperation continues. What we are seeing is that there is some qualitative change on the part of the United States that when Blinken came here, he also said that there are challenges with democracy at home uh, and, and they, they are uh, more, there is a certain level of humility on part of Washington uh, and, and they continue to have this dialogue. But what is the, what is the issue here is that, or, or what is the positive part of it, that while this conversation conversation continues on the sidelines. The larger picture, no one is missing. The cooperation is continuing. The warmth is growing uh, and the desire is growing stronger and stronger to work together. Well, absolutely. And Joshua Schifrinson, you know, it's very interesting that the prime minister making these remarks comes just a few hours ahead of him visiting the capital where he's expected to address that joint session. And we all very well know that there are a section of leaders, uh, congressmen, senators, etc., who've written that letter, who in fact have also said that they might even boycott that particular session. And that's been reported widely. So somewhere or the other, the prime minister setting the record straight or putting out his views, uh, you know, ahead of that particular joint session and a possible boycott by a section of leaders, you know, it's quite interesting that it should take place just a few hours before that. Yes, I think it's quite interesting that it's taking place just a few hours before that. Of course, the boycott threat by some members of Congress uh, is, is heavily symbolic, and it's a very small number of Congress uh, men threatening to boycott this issue. I was also struck by what the Prime Minister delivered for President Biden in his remarks. After all, President Biden has been at pains to portray the global competition with China as democracy versus autocracy. And he's received some criticism, including from members of Congress, that maybe by taking countries that have a questionable democratic record, not India in this case, uh, he, he, he's sullying this notion of democracy versus autocracy. And by virtue of the prime minister pushing back so strongly and speaking so firmly in favor of democracy, he should really justify President Biden's claim that this is a democracy versus autocracy challenge for the 21st century. Well, absolutely. And in fact, uh, joining us on the broadcast, we have with us uh, Don Bacon, United States representative. Also with us is Karthik Tana, author and columnist. Before I come across to you, gentlemen, as well as some of our other panelists, let's quickly listen in once again to what the Prime Minister said at that particular press conference, responding to those questions related to democracy. democracy <laughs> hai. जैसा राष्ट्रपति बाइडेन ने कहा भारत और अमेरिका दोनों के डीएनए में लोकतंत्र है लोकतंत्र हमारा स्पिरिट है लोकतंत्र हमारी रगों में है लोकतंत्र को हम जीते हैं और हमारे पूर्वजों ने उसको शब्दों में ढाला है संविधान के रूप में और हमारी सरकार लोकतंत्र के मूलभूत मूल्यों को आधार लेकर के बने हुए संविधान के आधार पर चलती है और हमारा संविधान और हमारी सरकार और हमने सिद्ध किया है डेमोक्रेसी कैन डिलीवर और जब मैं डिलीवर कहता हूं तब कास्ट क्रीड रिलीजन जेंडर किसी भी भेदभाव को वहां जगह नहीं होती है और जब हम लोकतंत्र की बात करते हैं तब अगर ह्यूमन वैल्यूज नहीं है ह्यूमैनिटी नहीं है 
ह्यूमन राइट्स नहीं है फिर तो वो डेमोक्रेसी है ही नहीं और इसलिए जब आप डेमोक्रेसी कहते हैं जब डेमोक्रेसी को स्वीकार करते हैं और जब हम डेमोक्रेसी को लेकर के जीते हैं तब डिस्क्रिमिनेशन का कोई सवाल ही नहीं उठता है और इसलिए भारत सबका साथ सबका विकास सबका विश्वास सबका प्रयास उन मूलभूत सिद्धांतों को लेकर के और इसलिए हम चलते हैं भारत में सरकार के जो बेनिफिट्स है वो एक्सेस टू ऑल है जो भी उसके हकदार है उन सबको मिलते हैं इसलिए भारत के लोकतांत्रिक मूल्यों में कोई भेदभाव नहीं है न धर्म के आधार पर न जाति के आधार पर न उम्र के आधार पर न भूभाग के आधार पर और लेट मी टेकिंग गेटिंग दैट रिस्पॉन्स फ्रॉम डॉन बेकन यूनाइटेड स्टेट्स रिप्रेजेंटेटिव वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग मिस्टर बेकन दैट वी फाउंड द प्राइम मिनिस्टर रिस्पॉन्डिंग टू दोज क्वेश्चन रिलेटेड डेमोक्रेसी इज ऑफ कोर्स गोर बी एड्रेसिंग द कांग्रेस जॉइंट सेशन वेरी सून एंड डिस्पाइट द फैक्ट दैट देर आर अ सेक्शन ऑफ पीपल अ स्मॉल माइनॉरिटी ऑफ लीडर्स वो गोर बॉयकॉट ऑन वॉट दे हैव इशूज दैट दे हैव रेज इज दोज वेरी इशूज द प्राइम मिनिस्टर हैज रिस्पॉन्डेड टू एंड अ वेरी फोर्सफुल रिस्पॉन्स ऑफ द प्राइम मिनिस्टर इफ यू मैनेज टू लिसन इन टू वॉट ही हैव टू से I think it was a very good response and we're so excited to welcome Prime Minister Modi to Congress. He represents the largest democracy in the world and fifth largest economy coming to America where the oldest democracy. I just see so much promise between United States and India. If we can work better together, we can improve our national security for both countries with China and Russia and Iran. Uh we can improve our economies working together. and there's so much good that come that could come out of our partnership and i just hope that we can build on it and make this relationship even better well absolutely and in fact let me bring in kartike tara on that kartike you know uh, as an author and as a columnist uh, perhaps we haven't heard the last word on this entire controversy but very interesting to see the prime minister responding and taking head on these very important issues related to uh, indian democracy that have been raised they've not just been raised there in the united states we've seen opposition raise it here in india as well but the prime minister uh, directly responding to those charges in very very strong terms yeah i think you know um he has always said this uh you know since even he was a gujarat chief minister and there were these allegations against him that you know when i when my government decides to give electricity to everyone it does not discriminate based on you know whether electricity is going to a hindu or a muslim you know and even uh, toilets for example toilets for women he isn't thinking about you know okay is this benefiting the hindu community or the muslim community so uh i think i think he probably reached his tolerance uh in so far as you know these uh unsubstantiated and you know easily refuted allegations are just thrown around without any sense of responsibility whatsoever and and worse by a former president of the united states you know which was very surprising and i think his timing uh, president obama's timing seems to be a little suspect because uh america has raised these points you know in in subtle ways you know through back channels etc but for obama to do it in a public interview uh right on the eve of you know uh, um, uh prime minister modi meeting president biden and you know him addressing the joint session of the us congress is a bit suspect and you know you you wonder what the motive is uh, are they attacking modi or um you know or are they resenting india's rise because and and by that i don't i don't mean to say don't get me wrong i don't mean to say you know india is modi and modi is india not at all but i think uh you know those who think that you know america will cheer india's rise once modi is gone they're living in a fool's paradise because american policy has always been that we want india to grow but only up to a certain point they don't want india to outgrow it in any any sense and i think this seems to be a calculated move to uh, essentially uh, you know throw right. uh, this slight spark in the in the in the beautiful india us relations that we have seen so right. far on this let me bring in let me bring in kartik please stay with us let me bring in antoine on that antoine you know there are those who believe that there are issues which are within the domain of domestic politics and then there are issues such as india us relationship which at the end of the day are between two countries can issues that are domestic to nature in india to domestic politics and uh, you know in that sense uh, uh, are issues that are normally seen to be debated within countries Uh, can that and should that be allowed to really have any kind of impact as far as relations between countries are concerned 
Thank you for having me on the show. Um, I think to answer your question, it's the paradox of having a truly strategic relationship as this uh, one between India and um, the US now is. On the one hand, uh, you go deeper, um, uh, broader in your understanding of each other, and you create a trust uh, which allows for um, um, uh, different views and the expression of, um, of, of, of disagreement sometimes or, or, or some form of disconnection. Uh, on the other hand, um, as we see also in the context of this um, visit and this relationship, um, the strategic focus um, is in the subtext of this visit um, and that is uh, to do with China. And so we do have um, inherently this presence of um, the comfort, the trust, which allows for um, um, a variance in perspectives on the one hand, and yet you have this foreign uh, policy and security agenda, which is uh, ever so strong at the same time. Um, I have to say that Prime Minister uh, Modi, in his remarks, spoke about uh, governance and uh, delivery. And certainly when I was um, in Delhi two weeks ago, um, I did hear that that matters to, to people. All right, let's listen once again to those comments uh, made by Prime Minister Modi during the course of the press conference. जो आश्चर्य हो रहा है कि आप कह रहे हैं कि लोग कहते हैं लोग कहते हैं नहीं भारत डेमोक्रेसी है और जैसा राष्ट्रपति बाइडेन ने कहा भारत और अमेरिका दोनों के डीएनए में लोकतंत्र है लोकतंत्र हमारा स्पिरिट है लोकतंत्र हमारी रगों में है लोकतंत्र को हम जीते हैं और हमारे पूर्वजों ने उसको शब्दों में ढाला है संविधान के रूप में और हमारी सरकार लोकतंत्र के मूलभूत मूल्यों को आधार लेकर के बने हुए संविधान के आधार पर चलती है और हमारा संविधान और हमारी सरकार और हमने सिद्ध किया है डेमोक्रेसी कैन डिलीवर और जब मैं डिलीवर कहता हूं तब कास्ट क्रीड रिलीजन जेंडर किसी भी भेदभाव को वहां जगह नहीं होती है और जब हम लोकतंत्र की बात करते हैं तब अगर ह्यूमन वैल्यूज नहीं है ह्यूमैनिटी नहीं है ह्यूमन राइट्स नहीं है फिर तो वो डेमोक्रेसी है ही नहीं और इसलिए जब आप डेमोक्रेसी कहते हैं जब डेमोक्रेसी को स्वीकार करते हैं और जब हम डेमोक्रेसी को लेकर के जीते हैं तब डिस्क्रिमिनेशन का कोई सवाल ही नहीं उठता है और इसलिए भारत सबका साथ सबका विकास सबका विश्वास सबका प्रयास उन मूलभूत सिद्धांतों को लेकर के और इसलिए हम चलते हैं भारत में सरकार के जो बेनिफिट्स हैं, वो एक्सेस टू ऑल है जो भी उसके हकदार हैं, उन सबको मिलते हैं इसलिए भारत के लोकतांत्रिक मूल्यों में कोई भेदभाव नहीं है न धर्म के आधार पर न जाति के आधार पर न उम्र के आधार पर न भूभाग के आधार पर That's a very potent statement that was made by Prime Minister Narendra Modi. And in the middle of all the controversy, the Obama interview, the uh, reflections that he posted there, which was a hypothetical uh, thought that he expressed, and the way it was lapped up by the Indian opposition, clearly the Prime Minister giving a befitting reply to all of them, uh, saying that there is no difference uh, made on the basis of caste, creed, gender or religion. And uh, human values exist in India and uh, that just shows that if India is a democracy, it works on a constitution. And Madhav, that's, that is the statement and that is the message that the Prime Minister has given, not just to those uh, who have raised their voice about boycotting the Prime Minister's address at the US Congress, but also to political parties in the opposition back home. Well, absolutely. And a time and a time.
wrap up and I think there are three important points and three important takeaways from that very strongly worded response of the Prime Minister. The first he said that this is not just uh, in our DNA of both our countries but our forefathers have enshrined these values, these democratic values in our constitution and it is our constitution that is pretty much practiced and in fact followed by governments. He says that whatever you spoke about, whether you're talking about humanity, whether you're talking about human rights, none of this is possible uh, through huh? the entire uh, uh, possibility as far as the existence if democracy is not. Well, uh the point is that uh, it is uh, time for politics back home and we have the first response coming in uh, from the Congress party, Pavan Khera, the spokesperson uh, of the Congress party, the chief spokesperson has already tweeted and he says such lackluster mediocre response despite a specially installed teleprompter, this mediocrity on a global stage is unacceptable. It is understandable why Prime Minister shuns press conferences at home. This is... Uh, as sarcastic as it can get and it is as uh, uh, as uh, hitting below the belt as it can be uh, mother uh, Pav pavan khera's uh, response and as expected you can almost uh, uh, like an orchestra uh, you know you know when it's going to happen maybe we've become the zubin mehtas of the political it's world interesting on two counts one that He's not countering the Prime Minister factually. He's, of course, passing a very uh, sort of critical statement. And if this was indeed an impromptu press conference, then where is the question of a teleprompter helping anyone in any case? You know, that's uh, that's a question that perhaps Mr. Khera would best have the answer to. He's calling this mediocrity on a global stage, which is unacceptable. Also, of course, again, taking a jibe saying he understands now why Prime Minister shuns press conferences at home. So that's been a criticism. Even Rahul Gandhi has said it. We've seen several leaders raise the question of why press conferences don't happen at home. But the question is this. The question is what the Prime Minister has said. Uh, do the opposition leaders in any way not endorse what he has had to say? Uh, will they now go ahead and will we be seeing a barrage of responses from opposition parties who've raised several issues which they claim uh, is a sign of autocracy increasing and democracy reducing here in India? Will it give rise to a new well, debate tomorrow? Well, talk about tomorrow's democracy within the Congress party itself. <laughs> well, that is a big question. And no, Navika, why this is important is also tomorrow's opposition meet in Patna, where all these opposition leaders are going to come together on one stage, one platform. What will they have to say from the Gandhi Maidan in Patna as far as this statement of the Prime Minister? Well, concerned? that is the only statement that is going to bring them together because they're going to lap this one up. Uh, they're going to make their comments on this because uh, on other issues, there seems to be no common ground uh, to bring all of these parties together. For now, Arvind Kejriwal in a different uh, zone right now. The Congress party not really ready to take on the 450 seat formula uh, for a one opposition candidate. So the only thing that can actually bind them together is the criticism of Modi. And for that, they'll have plenty to say tomorrow.